Ayan, medyo real talk tayo ngayon, no? Um, sorry, last week I was so busy. Grabe yung developments dito. Meron yung AUKUS deal, yung nuclear submarine deal. So there was a lot to write on. So wala akong time to, to actually do a kind of video analysis of yung latest developments sa ating politika, no? Um, of course, ang pag-usapan natin dito is so far yung yung sure official tandem na meron tayo no uh, because uh, hindi pa natin alam ano talagang plano ni Sara Duterte is she going to be a substitute candidate come november is she going to run at all for the presidency is, is she going to stay in the vow she said we don't know about we don't know with the Duterte's, right um, but clearly you know that that wishy washiness is not really helping their their situation perhaps as much as they they thought no maybe this work this trick work back in 2015-16 but you know times have changed others are, are you know quite aware of the uh you know this this antics no um and then when it comes to Lenny Robredo we're also not clear what is their plan is is Lenny gonna run for governor back in her home province is she gonna run for the presidency obviously she's not gonna run for the vice presidency that doesn't make sense no um and we know that Lenny made certain efforts to bring Isco and Pacquiao together and that kind of didn't work out so actually uh, weeks ago, I was already told that Isco chose someone else, and I was told that someone na, uh, who ran for the Senate uh, before Natalo siya, and this person has a medical background. You know? So, so, um, so obviously, you know, you could connect the dots, and eventually, you know, uh, we realize it's 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 really wrong, no? Uh, and that's what we're gonna discuss today. Now, uh, of course, <laughs> the other person we're not talking about is Bongbong Bong Marcos, and I believe that Bongbong Bong Marcos could become the candidate to to beat in these elections. Uh, the Marcoses have been steadily building up the momentum. The messaging has been quite smooth. They have the resources. They have some grassroots support. Uh, authoritarian nostalgia is also gaining ground. Historical revisionism is, uh, you know, reaching new heights. So, you know, maybe this is the time for the Marcoses. And of course, Imelda is a little bit in the 90s na siya, no? So, siguro the, the Marcoses ha also have a sense of urgency that they have to recapture Malacanang and have their moment of vindication soon, no? So, ito yung mga developments na meron tayo. Now, let's quickly talk about this isko Willy Ong kind of team-up, no? Does it make sense? Why on earth this tandem? Why didn't Isko choose someone else? I was hearing that possibly he could try to team up, who knows, maybe with Bongo Marcos. Tries to no, she, he could try to team up with someone from Isaias or someone from Mindanao, including Pacquiao, of course, who could help him to expand his base. Because based on the surveys that we saw, it's really hard to see him in NCR. But you know, the situation is very, very different when it comes to Mindanao. No? And even in Visayas, it's highly competitive. And who knows about Solid North? No? In Baguio, my hometown, or in Ilocos regions, how is he going to do? Let's see. No? So, so that's why the choice of William kind of raised eyebrows among some people and like, what's going on? Now, obviously we can see why Isco chose uh, William. Um, I mean, you could say, you know, on one hand, this is a good thing because um, William, of course, coming from a Chinese Filipino community, perhaps this creates a kind of an all Filipino inclusive kind of team uh, and, you know, especially uh, you know in light of a lot of uh, developments in terms of our relations with China and also the need to push back against uh, you know xenophobia among other things perhaps it's a good thing for us to have this kind of a, a kind of a multi-ethnic all Filipino team but that's that's more of a secondary or minor concern um, I think the other concern here or, or the plus for really Ong as far as Isco is concerned is that of course Willy Ong has a very good following online among OFWs uh, he's seen as very center or centrist candidate my i had limited interaction with him but they were pretty okay i mean uh, we saw each other in the sidelines of a forum in up public administration uh you know up public ad uh, back in the days in 2019 no? okay naman yung mga questions niya, you know? so i had a good interaction with him and of course when it comes to willie young um Mohang is gonna amplify yung online strength and presence uh ni, ni isko moreno and try to expand the base no uh and, of course, the technocratic background. I mean, uh, Isco has been positioning himself kind of like the Lee Kuan Yew of the Philippines. I know Duterte was trying to do that. Okay, it sounds kind of weird. But, of course, Isco perhaps has more credibility to make that case. Um, uh, 
when it comes to, uh, to Isco Morena, is also emphasizing that, of course, this pandemic or hopefully endemic soon, this is something that we have to deal with for quite some time. Okay, so go having a doctor will help. And alam natin yung national hero natin, si Jose Rizal, uh, some of the titans of uh, Asian politics like Prime Minister Mahathir, who, um, whom I interviewed a few years ago. I mean, these are people who are like doctors and statesmen, right? Or doctors and, and political figures or political activists. So sometimes doctors tend to be also very good in terms of uh, statesmanship, precisely because you know one thing you learn as as, as a medical uh, expert is to have what you call differential analysis you look at many many elements and then you look at what are the solutions no um rather than just manipulating the situation all or another at least theoretically that's supposed to be the uh, the case and actually before i got into social sciences i had some background in, in pre-med uh, or in medical courses so so you know that also helped me a lot in terms of having a much more big picture differential analysis approach now nonetheless uh, it's also very clear that there's certain risks with this uh, Willy Ong uh, Isco tandem. And let's go to that. Now, there was a lot of criticism. Nung sinabi ni Isco something like he wants to be a healing president. And, and okay, that sounds good because we really need a healing president. And having a doctor as your tandem makes sense. Um, we are a very polarized country, and then surely what Isco is trying to say is that we have to go beyond the binaries, you no know, Marcos versus Aquinos, liberal versus Duterte, uh, you know, all of those stuff, and, and that we have to move forward, focus on solutions, and all of that. That sounds great in principle, right? But of course, the devil always in, is in the details. And I think the concern of uh, a lot of people, including people who support Isco and want Isco to win, is that he might overplay this kind of a center, third force healing president card. Because the problem dito is that if you try to play the center too much and try to appeal to everyone, you might end up alienating a lot of people. Because many people want to vote for a candidate who passionately stands for something. So the challenge here for Isco Moreno is that you know he has to present himself as a good alternative to whatever is going wrong right now. At the same time, I know he w doesn't want to alienate some of the voters, some of the pro Marcos, pro Duterte people who might be open to supporting him, especially if their candidate doesn't run, or even if one of their candidates runs, or one if, even if both Sar and BBM run. No. Uh, uh, at the same time, I know Isco is trying to uh, push back against some of the impression that he's a secret Dilawa and that he's a secret opposition candidate, and so on and so forth. I, I get it, but the problem is. And the risk, rather, is if if Isco tries to reach to both reach out to both sides, he might end up like where Cheese Uskedero and to a certain degree even Grace Po ended up in 2016 elections, which is too much center, too much passive. You don't inspire people, and people rather go with the other candidates they're more passionate about. So should Bongbo Marcos and Sara both run, or one of them run uh, runs? No, um, it's possible that you know. Isco's trying to win both sides might push a lot of these people well, not to go to Isco but actually to consolidate or rally behind either Sara or Bongbo or if both of them run. And then there's also a risk on the other side and I think this is even more serious risk. The serious risk here is that you know, Isco will be seen as a, as a kind of an enabler, as kind of a passive guy or, or kind of actually a secret candidate of the other side and he might end up alienating votes that could have gone to him uh, from the side of Lenny, side of Poe, uh, among others. Um, even, I mean, if 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 Poe doesn't run, which is very likely, a lot of that votes could go to Lenny, right? If Pacquiao doesn't run, some of that votes also can go to Lenny. And if Lenny runs, no, then that's going to create some problem for Isco, right? Or even if Lenny doesn't run, if Isco is seen as kind of too passive, too center, right? Or, or kind of a secretly sympathetic to the other side. A lot of these people are just going to switch off and not vote in the coming election. So that's really careful to Isco John, and that's where Willie Ong has to be also careful about what he's saying. Because if Willie Ong comes here as if you know he's kind of like saying, "Oh, well, I'm a problem. I do Duterte, everything is fine," and and they're trying to win over the other, um, the other side, and then Bongbo Marcos and Duterte, uh, and Sara run, or at least Bongbo Marcos runs, then it's it's likely that you know Isco might have a net negative gain here no because it's one thing to gain on one side but if you lose more on the other side right what's the point you will have a net negative so it's a net positive gain that is caused to look for and you know for me we need the president who has a conviction right i mean tama you you want to be healing president but you have to also appreciate the importance of accountability uh competence among other things so so i'll just keep it there because there's a lot more to discuss 
I mean, who knows? If Pacquiao runs as a vice president, he could be kind of a, not a secret, but a parallel tandem to, to Isco. Let's see how this is going to uh, move forward. But, but the clear thing is this. Isco's strength is that he's a least polarizing candidate. But that sweet spot in the very center could also become a liability if he overplays the centrist position and he comes off as too much passive. And then if other candidates from both sides run, then, uh, you know, the more passionate supporters will rally behind all of these people. And in the end, Isco might end up with with, with much smaller share of the vote than he, he would have thought. Because it's important. Important dito, especially in a single round first past the post uh, elections, you know, sometimes you can become a president with, with having a passionate 25 to 30 person support behind you. And, and, and if you're not an inspiring candidate if, or if you're seen as too passive, you might end up losing to other candidates who have very passionate support and, you know, may consolidate that 25, 30 percent or 40 percent support. So let's see. There, uh, basta, yun lang, yun lang, yun lang sa akin, no? Isco has to be very, very careful about not overplaying the third forced healing president card. He has to be healing president. He has to play the center effectively, but he also has to stand for certain fundamental values and make certain choices on some very difficult decisions. That is part of leadership per se. And Willie Ong should be a, an asset, not a liability on this front. So I'll keep it there and there's more to discuss, of course, on this issue. All right, Maram Salamat.